Hello, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Like, subscribe, notifications. This is a follow-up from the last video. If you haven't seen the last video, I did a simpler trick. It's one of my favorite tricks where I throw a full audio source, typically a full track of some sort of any genre. Then I'll use a sequencer to use slice mode so I can get different trigger points. So check that video out. But it's been a few days since then and I was thinking the other day, I did something years ago in a track. I think it was called The Elephant Page. It's about eight years old. Where I sliced, the, I'd sampled something, but I sliced it to a MIDI track. And I was thinking, I haven't done that in, in years, for ages. So I did it again now in a, in a new session. And I haven't gone too far into it, but I, I wanted to make this video to show you very quickly, you can get some glitch sounds, glitch effects, and it can even work for remixing because if you've got the original stem or the original sound source, you can manipulate it a little bit where you can keep the essence of the original track and then have it included into your remix, but I'll, I'll get into that in a second. So I won't play with it too long, but I'll, I'll just run through it because then you can set it up and do it yourself. So I've just got a kick drum looped and I've got the two tracks that I used in the last video, which was a Kim Gordon track, Sketch Artist and Queens of the Stone Age, Misfit Love. I'll leave that for now. So I've got two new tracks. I've got a track called Progress by Idols. If you don't know it, check it out. It's fucking amazing. And I've got another one by Niels Fram, Set and Done, live version. Now I use stuff outside of dance and techno just to see... When I did it in the context of like techno, I used it on one of my tracks. It sounds too much like the original. You can process it and get away from it, but I'll show you the examples. So we've got here, so the original track by Idols is this one here. Let's have a listen. Hectic. So what I've done is I've looped it and I've consolidated it. The reason why, if you don't consolidate it past a certain length of audio, I'm pretty sure it won't let you slice to MIDI. It won't come up as an option. So for example, this one that's not consolidated, when I right hand click the audio clip, there's no slice to MIDI. When I get a shorter clip and consolidate it, I can now slice this to, to new MIDI track. Now it's gonna prompt you with all different settings. It'll probably look like this with warp marker at the top or transit at the top. I've played between 18 and 16 notes. Um, sorry, eight notes, not 16. So check this out. The slicing preset has a whole bunch of other stuff. A lot of it didn't work. So just go quarter eight, uh, sorry, eighth notes and check it out. So it's gonna create a mini clip and you can see it's sliced, there's 32 slices. And if you play it original, right? It's basically cut it up, that, that consolidated audio sample into 30, 32 sections. So as it plays and it goes up in slices, it sounds the same. So the beauty is if we fuck all that off, essentially, We've got 32 mini sample points. So if I just do this, say, so, just turn it up. So this is where I was saying, if you're remixing and you've got the sound source, or even if you are sampling, you can keep a lot of the original essence in there. Like if I delete that, could maybe use that as a baseline, let's say, as an example, if I was remixing this track. Just an example while I had that there. But the beauty of it is, once you sort of... If you slice it to one slash 32, you'll have more slices here, have more to work with, keep that in mind. But just quickly here. So now, 
The reason I wanted to show this was because you can create glitches really fast, and I'll show you why. Once you've created it, once you've sliced it to a MIDI track, it comes up with all these parameters, a tactic decay, sustain, release. But then you've got the start offset, loop length, loop compress, and the X fade snap. Again, beauty of Ableton is you can hit random. So already, like if you're remixing, you can affect it pretty quickly. And mind you, we're hitting random. So if we set up the ADSR sort of a bit more normal. What I love about it is, is these bottom four. Because this is where you can So you can, you can really glitch up the original, obviously this context is sort of in regards to if you're remixing, but you can do anything with it. You, you can process that far where you might get a bass note out of it and you can sort of duplicate that and make a bass line. I'm sure you'll be able to start making a lot of different things out of this one sound. I just wanted to highlight a different way we can do some sampling basically. And I haven't done any processing. We can obviously throw effects on there and really warp it and, and really get crazy with it. But out of the box, what I found was let's leave that. What I found was so, what, what I started doing after that was I threw four LFOs on, throw as many as you want on. And what I did was I just mapped each bottom parameter. And this is how you can get more glitchy. I'm just gonna cycle. But then if you start playing with all your rates and depths, you go slower or faster. Oh, that stopped moving, there we go. So you could use it to create glitch samples. You could use it for remixing. You could use it for anything. So let's just duplicate this. Let's delete it. Let's have a look. You would be able to start. The loop compress really fucks a little bit. Then of course you could add all your go-to effects. Now, not to mention, I haven't automated the ADS at the top, but If I go into it, you can really stretch out. It's good for, good for vocals. So keep the sustain and release low. And if you were going a bit shorter in decay, I would probably say, where are you, you fucker? Oop. Put everything back on, Cheech. And you can again play with all the LFOs and change it all. But again, if we put the release and sustain up, you can really, sh really drain out the notes. So if we go back to the original melody up here. Let's 
turn. Let's turn this off. So you can get my point. And, and that's just with a random rock track. But I haven't, I haven't done this yet, so we're going to find out live together. If I do it with Niels Fram, like a live piano, and let's go to 16th. It's going to give us more options. So you can see. Now, it's a short loop, so... But it's also a good way to extract... Um, small hints of the original sound source or the track if you're remixing to keep in there. I know you can do it a hundred other ways. You can chop off the audio or even do what we did in the other video, but it's just another way to, everyone's workflow is different. But going down this way, you'll be able to come out with different outcomes and different results. I mean, because you have the luxury of taking such a small part. So even if I go to back here let's take these LFOs and copy them so let's map this fucker map That's just one note. You can use the crate, Atmos, effects, impacts. Now, if I start getting shit like that that I like, fuzz pedal. Um, let's go there. It might not be enough. I'm just curious. Let's let me just shorten the decay on this kick. We'll call it SC for side chain. Because I like. That sound, this kick's a bit too full. But, let's do this. There, the side channel. And of course, we could. Saying, what the fuck does that sound so weak? Yeah, it's very simple, but nice, beautiful live piano to. It's the loop compress. Um, LFO that's really, really getting into it. And that's just the pedal. There's, you know, you can obviously go and put, I reckon an echo would be all right on that. But yeah, automating all these. on your hi-hat 909 ride off you go 
So, very quick demonstration, but I haven't gone that deep into it. Set your slices. I did it in the context of like a, a techno tune. It didn't really, it, I mean, of course it can work. You can do fucking anything you want. But if I show you, I'm not going to show you. Try it yourself. It's it's not bad. It, yeah, so there you go. But using that Kim Gordon track that I used in the last video. If we listen to what we sliced. Now let's start with the key. And there's no processing on this. It's just all on the... Um... But you know, shit like that, I would be, especially that type of sound, I'd be using that. That first hit gets me excited. But even these, like there's, you can use these how you want, but there's four different samples there as well. Let's have a look. You know, no EQing, no processing, I'm just showing it. Then the Queen of the Stone Age track, Misfit Love, that I said before. Oh no, hang on. So. Uh, that's what we sliced. Now, see the sustain, the ADSR is quite short. And there's no LFOs on this. This is another way to use it. Don't automate it. Don't put the LFOs on there. And resample this live and get all those washdowns, build ups. You know, shit like that reminds me of like um, Paul Wolford erotic discourse. You know, you could. You get the point. So check it out. Tell me if you like it. It was a follow-up thought after the last video. I hadn't done it in years. I'm going to be doing it again. And yeah, that was just a demonstration to see what you can do. Good for remixing. Good for glitches, build-ups. Um, of course, you can use it with any, for anything you like. Resample it live. Get a whole bunch out of there. Take your shit out and use them. Subscribe. See you next week. Ciao.